Yeah, I, mo I primarily do self-portraits. That's what I've been known for. Occasionally I do offshoots. And this falls into what I call my southern narrative <laughs> because I grew up in Georgia and a lot of my pieces refer back to the deep south or history. Um, this is actually my daughter, so there is a sort of connection to me. And as my children have gotten older, I occasionally will put them in pieces and have them pose. The second thing about this one is in addition to my large self-portrait drawings, I have been doing much more elaborate sketchbook drawings. Um, these are pieces I'm constantly drawing if I ever find myself having to wait in the car, having to, you know, if I, you know, I have, always have my studio in my pocket. And this original image emanated from a sketchbook drawing that I'd started. And I loved the little sketchbook piece, I resolved it, and then I knew I wanted to make it bigger. And that's where this piece actually came from. So it's connected, it's a drawing, it's you know, larger than usual, and it ties back into some southern uh, narratives that are in a lot of my older work. You know, since I do so many self-portraits, I tend to go into more um, interpersonal meaning. Uh, for a long time I did much more narrative portraits of models. I, uh, for the first seven years out of graduate school I was doing these large scale portrait drawings that were interactive pieces. And around 2001, um, with birth of first child and, and other events happening, I started doing self-portraits uh, to deal with apprehension and emotion that I was feeling in, inside. And I realized a self-portrait is, is a closer connection. So if I put a model in a pose and I'm trying to express something that I'm feeling, it felt insincere. So if I put myself in the pose and went to that, it's a more psychological place, it felt much more sincere. And um, also it kept me from being inhibited. If I, I wouldn't have a model pose in a way that would make them feel uncomfortable, whereas I don't mind posing for my own work in ways that seem uncomfortable or unusual or scary. Some of them are just personal stories and narratives. Um, I don't ever think about the viewer. That's not true. I mean, I really, while I'm working on a piece or a composing piece, I don't think about how the viewer is going to respond. It is helpful or it's nice, fortuitous, if a viewer comes upon a piece and sees a connection, something they can emotively connect to, and, and um, perhaps I can sort of take them on my own psychological ride. But, you know, and, and then sometimes some of the more psychological pieces do address world universal issues that are, are causing me some apprehension. But um, for the most part, I don't think they're pieces about outside. They're mostly internal narratives in my head. <laughs> And is this uh, representative of what you'll have on the studio tour? I'll have several of these pieces. I'll have a lot of the self-portraits, whatever I've been working on in the studio that's new. And I always bring about around two or three, four old pieces, call them the old favorites. So I'm sort of changing that year to year. Whatever older pieces I'm showing, each year it's different. What a lot of my newer pieces have in connection is I've been embellishing with beads and Mrs. Goldleaf and pearls. So the, you'll see a lot of work like this as well. You know, it's not, I can't say that it's influenced the actual work as much as it's influenced my, I don't know, say confidence. The community is much more supportive than anywhere else I've lived as an artist. Um, and when you have a supportive community, I, I think you can grow more as an artist. You know, it, that feeds into what you're doing. So I can say that, that there's this overall um, sort of community vibe that, that feeds into what I'm doing. I feel it's okay to do the stuff that I'm, the drawings that I'm doing.